This video will contain spoilers for Star Wars Visions Volume 2, so sorry, but <laughs> you've been warned. Hello, my little filmer dudes. My name is Ivan Montero, and thank you for joining me on my journey to watch every TV show and every sitcom ever created. Not really, but we are going to get close. Not to my eyes, Luke. We did this once for Star Wars Visions Volume 1, and now we're gonna do it again for Volume 2. I tried to make these spoiler free for you all, but I mean, these are so good, I have to discuss them. So here's what I'm gonna do. For those of you who haven't seen the show yet, but still want to know my ranking and my opinions before you do, I'm going to do a brief overall spoiler free mini review in just a few moments then you can skip to this time code right here i will also have chapter time so you could just look at that but this is where i will go over the overall ranking and brief summed up opinion for each kind of so if you haven't watched this series yet and care about spoilers then you're good up until right about this time code you're welcome. Okay, spoiler free thoughts time. First, the art style. First and foremost, I want to say that I hated Star Wars Visions Volume 1. The full on anime was not it for me. It was just not it for Star Wars. Those stories barely felt like Star Wars, not just to me, but to many people out there apparently. Not to dig on anime, but that and Star Wars don't really mix. I can accept these are non-canon Star Wars stories, so whatever the heck can happen can happen, but I only liked about three or four of them. You can check out my ranking video in the card above somewhere. But I loved this volume. The different art styles? Oh my gosh, my artist nerdy heart was having a feast. I just wanted to say that this volume did it for me. It truly did it for me, well, mostly. There are a few that weren't really intended for me and that's okay, but they're definitely going on the bottom for sure. So yep, this is a, a pretty much a biased list, but it's not biased in terms of art because again, art is subjective. So there might be some art that might work for you and some that don't work for the other you. But you know, it, some did for me and some didn't. But I definitely wanna know your list down below. The Star Wars visions moving forward, they should absolutely keep this differing art style format for sure. All anime? That sucked and didn't really feel like Star Wars at all. Different art styles? Amazing. Even the two anime art style episodes were great. And in fact, I think both of them are in my like top favorites of this episode, but yeah, we'll get there. But because of that, it wasn't the anime itself that I didn't like. It was just the stories and the fact that they just didn't really feel like Star Wars at all. And they just were just terrible stories. <laughs> These stories. Chef's kiss. So this is something I'm worried that I'm gonna like miscommunicate my intention. This second volume as a whole is very heavily female centered. There's nothing wrong with that per se. However, I don't know how it will do with the male Star Wars fan seeing as, and I did count, six stories being fully female leads with the other three being 60-40 Female, male, female. Again, this is all fine, but it doesn't really help the narrative that Star Wars is becoming an A-Force type of universe, and I'm not really sure how others would feel about this. I felt fine throughout the whole thing because honestly, these are amazing stories and stories shouldn't really be defined by gender, unless of course it is specifically for that gender, then yes, of course. But something like Star Wars shouldn't be defined by by gender at all, because Star Wars is for everybody. I'm just saying, I really hope a certain nasty loud group doesn't give this show flack and hate on it on social media just because there are more female leads than there are male leads. But I'm also saying this show kind of half shoots itself in the foot by not balancing out the, the female to male leads. I really wish we were at a point in history where this truly wasn't an issue with any group whatsoever, but unfortunately, here we are. So basically, if you're hearing anybody out there that says that this show is bad because it's too much female leads, don't listen to them. They're the wrong kind of person. This volume is fantastic and I, and I implore you to watch it. Honestly, this series kind of felt like a giant uh, middle finger or a giant dig on the character of Rey. It's almost as if the studios were like, hold my bantha of milk, I got this, and made better female-led stories than the entire trilogy series ever could. Next there's, a next, there's a slight subtle commentary on capitalism and socialism within the show. I have my own opinions on capitalism and socialism. I honestly 
obviously think that there that healthy capitalism is important. Work for your own money. You get out whatever you put in a type of mentality. It inspires determination, perseverance, and encourages dreams. However, I also think that being charitable and being good stewards with your money is important as well. Nobody necessarily has a right to anything really lest they actually work for it, but human kindness, morals, and ethics, we gotta help each other out. Socialism in the form of being charitable and humble enough to invest your money into others and invest into helping others, two separate ideas, is where I think socialism and capitalism works in tandem, hand in hand. Of course, it's not all black and white. People are evil. That's what the show is kind of all about. A lot of people are going to say it's full on capitalism, which no, it's just called greed. This series has an overall well done take on modern day capitalism and socialism, almost to the point of communism, actually. It's rather subtle. If you're not looking for it, you may not even see it. You might just say, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> But it's there, very subtle, but it's there. And I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. When I saw it, I was like, whoa, I just noticed. I just noticed what it was. The Bad Batch, The Mandalorian, and now Visions are all tackling these backyard stories of people dealing with the rise of the empire in different parts of the planet and in different groups. It's quite interesting. If I could, I would write letters to Lucasfilm, just imploring them to make this canon. They're that good. And lastly, volume two has a more Star Wars feel than volume one. Like I previously mentioned, volume one didn't really feel like Star Wars at all. I understand their anthology, but there has to be some bit of suspended belief within the Star Wars canon, right? Volume two is a volume that I could easily take and fit into the Star Wars canon if I so choose to. Lucasfilm, please choose to. <laughs> and the thing is, we would all believe it. Volume one, no one would believe it. Not even a little bit. Volume two feels more like Star Wars proper than volume one, and I loved it. As a whole, I give Star Wars Visions volume two an eight. Technically, the averages should be about 7.6, at least of the ratings that I gave it, but I like it so much, but I do agree that some of them were not, were not that good, so eight is where I'm landing. Okay, now time for the ranking. Spoilers from here on out. We are going from worst to best, just like last time. This is your five, four, three. I'm just gonna commit. It was stupid, but I'm gonna commit, and that's it. You're you're done. Spoiler warning. Done. <laughs> In number nine, we have The Bandits of Golok, episode seven. I feel so insanely bad, honestly. I, I really do. But this episode, I couldn't believe it. This is last on the list for a reason. The very worst Star Wars season two, or volume two. This is last on the list for a reason. The very worst episode of Star Wars Vision volume two is The Bandits of Golok. I had even watched these late in the day, but I was so insanely bored watching this episode that I actually fell asleep for just, just a few minutes, just a few minutes. I, I couldn't even rewind because I was just that insanely just done with this episode. <laughs> I got the gist of it, but I just, from the very incomplete look of the animation and, and the lack of a good story, the episode was just too fan filmy to me. I just didn't like it. I tried to rewatch it the other day just to make sure, and I, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't want to do it again. It's so boring. However, I feel this might resonate with some others, perhaps, but it's, it's not enough to garner anything more than a five out of 10 for me, which if the last one got a five out of 10, Hey, we are off to a very good start. In number eight is In the Stars, episode three. Okay, when I saw the trailer to Star Wars Visions, there were a few art styles that I was like, whoa, huh, interesting. This was one of them. However, if our ranking art styles, which I, it, which would be unfair because everyone has different tastes and there are different art styles for those different reasons. So we're gonna be unbiased with the art. This is gonna come up again later, trust me. But art wise, this one is gorgeous. It's not my preferred method of art consumption, but I can totally get behind the art style because it's just so pretty to look at. For 15 to 16 minutes, it was all right. I enjoyed the creativity that was his art style. Even the music, oh my gosh, so pretty. However, I absolutely hated the story. Takina, the little sister, retelling the story of her mother to Coden, the big sister, was a lot 
of obvious exposition just so that we, the audience, could understand what was happening. I've seen enough content to know that exposition done well does not look like this. It's a bit painful to watch. Honestly, it's very hard to stomach, but thank God for those visuals because <laughs> Takina's voice acting is rough. I'm sorry to pick on a real child actress, but come on, because honestly, her acting was incredibly incredibly distracting. Valentina Murr, the voice actress for Coden, did phenomenally, however. She carried this episode, so good on her! The best thing I can say about this is that it's, it's super pretty, and the overall message is very cheesy, but immensely cute. This episode gets a six out of 10. In number seven is I Am Your Mother, episode four. As soon as the first shot popped up, bright colors and a claymation just guy dead center, I audibly said, oh no. <laughs> I am not a fan of traditional claymation dudes. I, 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 but again, we are not, we are not basing these off of the art styles because the story here is very cliche, but very adorable, so adorable. It's the classic mom and daughter strenuous relationship angle that we have seen before. Honestly, in my notes, I wrote down, this is the Star Wars turning red, right down to the mother going to the daughter's social event and embarrassing her by bringing, her, by bringing the daughter something the daughter forgot. Note, I didn't really care to learn the, any of these characters' names, honestly. It's not a testament to whether this episode was good or bad, it's just... It's mediocre, it's middle of the road. This episode is very clearly aimed towards kids, so we're keeping that in mind here. But the acting and the humor are actually pretty good. They're really, really good. Again, the art style and the intended target market isn't for me, but I understand that. One gripe I had was that they didn't really establish much that the mom was an embarrassment to the daughter or that the daughter was annoyed by the mom any time before this. So we're kind of just expected to already understand this by the time the daughter treats the mom just so incredibly poorly. I was just sitting there like, D don't, tr that's your, the mom didn't do squat. I feel so bad for your mom. Don't treat your mom like that. She is your mom. This episode only manages to squeeze out a 6.5 out of 10 for me. In number six is Sith. Episode one. A lot of you guys are gonna be like, number six so low, why? It's not technically low, it's not. As soon as this one started, I was like, portal? And then it just kept going and I was like, it's totally Star Wars portal, that's shell. Now this is one where I would place at like number two, maybe number three in terms of art style. If I were ranking art styles, but we're not, the art is gorgeous, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It is creative and stunning. This is very reminiscent of arcane Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots art style for, wh for which many of you didn't seem to care and I don't understand it. Just the story in comparison to the next one is a little weak, but I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, especially at the reveal that she was a Sith previously, which I mean, we all saw coming a, w a mile away. But as soon as she ignited, Ignote? The red side of her yellow red dual lightsaber, I was like, she's legitimately cool Rey. <laughs> Ray was supposed to have a double lightsaber in the OG Colin Trevorrow planned episode nine, hence why Ray is so good with her staff in episode seven. And Ray is supposed to be this really weird, balanced, forced person who isn't really a gray Jedi, but just this new type of Jedi, hence the yellow lightsaber, just like Star Wars Shell ended up learning by the end of her episode. Hence, having this super cool red and yellow double-sided lightsaber. Look out, Darth Maul. I think you've just been dethroned from having the coolest dual-sided lightsaber. Both are even curved opposite of each other. So imagine throwing that thing, man. Also found it interesting that both volume one and volume two start out with this ambiguous, mysterious Sith story. But because this story is just a tad on the slow side, I give it an eight out of 10. See? And not so bad now, is it? In number five is Ao Song, episode nine. This whole episode I loved. From the Lego movie-like animation to the music and the twist that Ao has the special gift that purifies kyber crystals, which of which, again, we all saw a mile away. This episode ends with her leaving to go be and train as a Jedi, something a lot of these episodes actually do. A lot of them, a lot of them end with the main characters having to choose between destiny and whether it's Sith or with the Jedi or and their home life. By the end of this series, by this episode, I realized that the main thesis of this volume was choices. Do we choose good or bad? 
Either path require leaving. Either way, both paths require leaving the past entirely behind and never looking back for the greater cause. So honestly, what path do you choose? If both yield the same emotional consequence. Owl Song is just a really put together Star Wars short film and it truly feels like a short film that could stand in the Star Wars canon. In number four, we have the Pit, episode eight. This one surprised me. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think I would enjoy this one because of how slow it started out. However, it quickly picks up speed due to all the visual cues that it gives you. What I liked about this one most was the main message of the story. When the village people came to the pit after my homeboy died, just so that everybody else could be saved, I was like, no way. The story, even though Krooks died, he still made such a big impact on the rest of the people, not just in the pit, but on the surface dwellers as well. That's powerful to have that much impact, to have gone through so much just to save the people that you love. That doesn't go unnoticed. And no matter what, even if the darkest thing could happen to you, there's still room for hope and goodness still. I just, I what an encouraging message. But also as a community, why not come together and help those who are beneath us? Let's help our fellow people out of the pit and bring them to our level. Our as in someone do that to me. <laughs> I need help out of this pit. <laughs> but how? By dragging them up, not putting them down, just encouraging them, giving them chances to work, to live healthily, and it just wow. I really enjoyed the townsfolk uniting and realizing Crooks didn't die. He still lives on in everyone's minds and hearts rent free and that deserves a 9 out of 10. Ho ho ho, a 9 out of 10, we're only in number four. <laughs> in number three is The Spy Dancer, episode six. Okay, I either want a comic in this exact art style or a show in this exact art style because this was a great, great pilot for an amazing story. I honestly thought the general was going to end up being her husband who took their child with him upon leaving for the empire. Boy, was I wrong. And woo, when I discovered that it was her son. How can you not want more? A hardened heart grieving mother finds her lost indoctrinated son and now needs to bring him back to the light. Now, gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> also, this episode is pretty dark. It brings up a little bit on the, on the commentary of being different equals absolutely the freak not with the Empire, seeing as they shaved off the dude's horns and likely gouged out his green eye. So dark. Also, Loyly, or however you pronounce her name, is basically Rapunzel with a dress. <laughs> This gets a 9.5 out of 10. In number two, we have Journey to the Dark Head, episode five. This is another one I found myself saying, where is this show at Disney Lucasfilm? This is an excellent pilot for a future animated Star Wars show, and it's anime. The art in this one is, the art in this one is really, really well done. And the acting, superb. This episode is honestly the most like Star Wars out of all of the episodes. The villain, so good. I was terrified, terrified by this villain just as much as the characters were. The journey Toll goes on and the fact that this was all, all about Toll the whole time, that was very nice. That was, that was a nice touch. One of the standout scenes in this whole short is the scene where Ara and Toll are falling through the sky <laughs> and Ara is trying to, to rescue Toll who is unconscious and falling. It, the imagery and the shots that just, it was just so beautiful. The imagery and the shots, chef's kiss times 15,000. <laughs> I also enjoyed the main message of the story, which was about revitalizing hope and coming to terms with the world and how it is. Yeah, good and evil exist and will unfortunately always exist because evil, but we can do our best to not feed the evil, not be bogged down by the evil, and just do girl good in the world. I loved how Ara and Toll became friends by the end of this, and romance was not a part of it. You could probably guess it, but this one gets a 9.5 out of 10 as well. And lastly, in number one, if you haven't used the process of elimination, in number one is Screecher's Reach, episode two. Holy crap. I absolutely love this one. It's my all time favorite. From the art style, my favorite art style of all of them, to the music, 
to the script. What a solidly written script. By the time we get to the end, we find out that the girl that was talking to a Sith trainer, a, a Sith Lord, this entire time, and she was not just praying to some random god or entity inside the necklace that she was wearing. She wasn't praying. She was talking, she was communicating. That blew me away. As soon as the voice replied, I realized that she had just killed the last Sith apprentice and she had just became the next Sith apprentice. I was basically foaming at the mouth. This one is so insanely amazing. I fell for Doll. We all find ourselves in situations where we just want out and we'll do anything for it. I had to do something similar with jobs and just the necessary steps in order to progress in life and that's scary. But hey, when you're desperate, angry, or just plain depressed, you do anything to get out of it. And Dahl did what she had to do. But dang, the Sith Lord saw the vulnerability inside of Dahl and manipulated the bad thing to seem like the best good thing for her. Plus, the seeds were right there. I never saw it coming. I should have seen it coming. I should have seen it coming. That's how you write a good plot twist. Of course, there's not really anywhere else to go, but this gets a 10 out of 10. This episode was perfect. Well, that was it. Have you guys seen Star Wars Visions Volume 1 and 2? If you have, what are your rankings for Volume 1 and what are your rankings for Volume 2? Try to be unbiased toward the art style with these. Just focus on the stories and focus on what really resonated with you. And sure, art can play a part into it. You can check out my channel below for more ranking, reacting, reviewing, and theory breakdowning. <laughs> my sushi media links are in the description below, as well as my link to my Patreon. So go ahead and make sure you check that out. You're gonna get a lot of special Patreon perks, so go ahead and make sure to read the tiers. But you also get videos way earlier, at least reactions at least. Once again, my sushi media links are in the description below. I am a freelance photographer, graphic designer, and screenwriter. So if you have any needs in those areas, check out my website down below and let me know. Once again, my social media links are in the description below and I will see you next time. You've just been modified. <laughs>